Hi, I'm Beaker, and this is our burglar, Trudy the Fence Lentz. And this is Product Zombie Survival Guide Explained, Section 5 Crafting. This video will cover inventory crafting, barricades in detail, carpentry and metalwork, and how to manipulate world tiles. We'll talk about how experience works, what, how to effectively level, and what these skills will do for you while surviving the apocalypse. Just about everything in Project Zomboid can be crafted from your inventory. Look at your inventory, you can right click, and the context menu pops up. These are the things you can do with this item. You can either favorite it, equip in both hands, equip primary, if it's a weapon or something you can attach to your back. What we're interested in for inventory crafting is something like this, drill plank. When we mouse over to one or two, it'll say drill plank uses one of a plank or a log, and it keeps one of the screwdriver, bread knife, butter knife, chip stone, honey knife, kitchen knife, machete, or stone knife. Now this drill plank option allows you to create a notched plank. We right clicked, now we have a notched wooden plank. For instance, if I wanted to drill this plank, what do I need? I need a screwdriver. Let's go ahead and drop our screwdriver. Let's throw that on the ground. When we right click the plank, we can no longer drill this plank. And we have no idea that we can't drill that plank unless we went into this crafting menu. Note, when you're in this menu, you can pause so you can just like scroll through, search. When you're in the crafting menu in here, it lights up, it highlights what you have if you're able to make it. So this make sturdy stick pops up to the top of the list. You can scroll through all these different things under general. But if I wanted to drill that plank, I'd have to type drill plank. And this is the action that it is. Now, notice this doesn't light up and I can't do it. But when I unpause and I walk over to the screwdriver nearby, it highlights. Because there is a screwdriver nearby. I can also right click the plank. And now I have the option to drill the plank. What this means is that there is a screwdriver in your vicinity. It doesn't necessarily have to be in your inventory. So let's try this now. We right click the plank and we drill the plank. Our character, Tree Defense, picks it up, drills it, puts the screwdriver back to where it came from, which was the floor. Now let's put our screwdriver in, say, this container right here. We walk away, right click the plank, we can't drill it, we get close to it, we right click, drill plank, it shows up, we grab it and we put it back into our cupboard. So we don't need to have all the tools with us at all times. However, uh, it does help to have certain survival essentials with you. The point is, is that in order to use the context menu in, for inventory crafting, you need to know what you can craft. And if you don't know what you can craft, it's an issue. So we have an empty bowl here. We're gonna go ahead and do a little bit of cooking with our inventory crafting menu. We right click, create salad, and corned beef. There it is. That's technically inventory crafting. That's cooking, and we'll get into that later. If we were to go ahead and take these nails and put them into here, it's no longer highlighted. When we get closer to it, so say we want to have our warehouse set up, craft one, and now we have 100 nails in our inventory. Inventory crafting, let's just go ahead and box those back up. Okay. You can barricade windows and doors in Project Zomboid using either wood planks and nails or propane torch and metal sheets or metal bars. You cannot barricade using inventory crafting. You have to do contextual menus in the world in order to actually do the barricade. In order to do this, you need to have the items required in order to do the barricade, such as a propane torch and a metal sheet, or you need to have hammer, nails, and a plank. So we're going to go ahead and right click this log. We're going to saw the log. We're going to saw all of them. We're sawing the log on the ground, so the planks are going to go onto the ground. If we had the log in our inventory, and we saw the log in our inventory, what's going to happen is this log is going to go into our inventory. Well, the planks are going to go into our inventory. Three planks from that one log. Now with our contextual menu of barricade planks shows up. We're going to right click, barricade plank. You can barricade up to four planks on each side of this window or this door. So we right click barricade planks. We've barricaded the door and we've barricaded the window. However, we're going to want to leave our door unbarricaded for now. We're just going to go ahead right click unbarricade. You need either a crowbar or a, a claw hammer in order to actually unbarricade. Notice how my hammer popped out in order for me to do this. If I were to unfavorite and drop this hammer, we can right click this barricade, unbarricade, pull out the crowbar, Crowbar is unbarricading it. So you need one of these tools to unbarricade. Additionally, you just smack it. Eventually it'll break. So we right click, barricade, plank. Notice that there is nothing in here about barricading 
at all in the crafting. This, so this crafting menu does not help us with the barricading other than to solve the locks. So we're going to go ahead and do the full barricade. Right click barricade, we're going to fast forward. We just got a carpentry skill. Because every time you barricade, you're getting carpentry XP. So we just leveled up our carpentry. Fantastic. This window is barricaded on both sides. Each one of these planks has 1000 HP, so this window has effectively 8000 HP. Let's go ahead and barricade this door. We're going to go ahead and barricade with planks. Since we have our option set up where we go back to normal speed after we do this, we can fast forward with impunity. When barricading with planks, you can only barricade using actual planks. You can't use scrap wood, you can't use logs themselves, you have to saw them. You can't use these notch wooden planks, it has to be planks. When you're barricading with metal, there's multiple ways you can do it. You can barricade windows with metal in Project Zomboid. You can do this with either metal bars or you can do it with metal sheets. When you right click, you have metal sheets and metal bars. So you want to right click, barricade, metal bars. Both metal bars and metal sheets have the same amount of HP. They've got 5,000 HP per side. So these three metal bars have 5,000 HP to them. You can also see through it. So you're going to want curtains so you can close it, unless you want them to be able to see you. You can barricade with both the metal bars and the metal sheets. So we're going to right click and barricade with this metal sheet. On this side of the house, we have a metal bar barricade, which they can see through. It has 5,000 HP. A metal sheet barricade, which has 5,000 HP. 4,000 HP, 1,000 per plank. You start getting vision blocking at three planks or higher. So if I were to remove two planks, and there's only two planks on this door, we can see through it. So they can see through it as well. So note, if you're trying to block without a sheet, you want to barricade at least three high. Now we've got vision blocked, so they can't see us, which is great. You can do it both inside and outside. No, we've got this metal sheet on this window. We're going to go ahead and right-click barricade metal sheet. This window effectively has 10,000 HP. Each one of these metal sheets has 5,000 HP. There's no way to know how much HP is left on this metal sheet because once it goes, it's going to break entirely. With the planks, however, you can see that they're getting knocked down. So we're going to put bars on this window. So we now have two sets of metal bars, it takes three metal bars and some propane. Note that it says in the barricading that you need a welding mask. This is inaccurate. You do not need a welding mask. You can go ahead and just do it. Why? I don't know why. That's just the way it is. You are getting carpentry experience when you're sawing logs, and you're getting carpentry experience when you're applying barricades. You're also getting metalworking experience whenever you apply a barricade. We'll cover that in detail later. You can barricade using the claw hammer, the stone hammer or the ball peen hammer. The club hammer does not work for this, unfortunately. It says that it's not capable of doing that. You can also barricade interior doors or windows. The walkway here is blocked because we've got furniture in the way, we've got this TV in the way, and you can't walk underneath these stairs, actually. In order to move these, we're going to have to use our pickup tool. In Project Zomboid, you can't just slide the couch out of the way. You have to use the pickup tool try to pick it up. We've got a chance to break 67.5, so we're just going to leave this here. Can we pick this up? We can! We can pick up this fancy low table. It's an encumbrance 5. Now we can walk right past this. And we're here. We're going to go ahead and barricade. Apart from barricading with metal sheets, barricading with metal bars, or barricading with wooden planks, you can also move furniture around in order to barricade with furniture. So barricading by furniture is a little tricky. You could just put a barricade in front of the door, and it stops it from opening. However, in order to get a window fully barricaded, you need to barricade the tile next to the window and the tiles adjacent to the window as well. The window removes collision for objects in the square directly next to it. So this square and this square on both sides of the window remove the collision from the object. So let's say we go to our pickup tool, pick up, let's grab this TV. And let's also grab this low brown table. If we take this brown low table and we place it in front of this window, first of all, let's look at it here. Brown low table, it has collision. We, can, we can't walk through this. If we pick up the table and we go ahead and, oop, we go ahead and place the table, it, the collision has been removed because it's next to this window. We can no longer walk straight up to this. However, if we come from this side, we will and we can just walk right over it. Doors are straightforward. You can just put something right in front of it, and it does not remove collision. We can see that this window is barricaded. We have a table, we have a barbecue, and we've got another low table. If we go to our pickup tool, and grab that, we can grab this, we can grab this. So let's say we wanted to go inside. We pick this up, we move our barbecue out of the way, 
the window, remove the collision for this part of the table. Note this part of the table also has collision. If we walk in this, we crawl over every single piece of furniture in the way. We cannot get back out because this tile is blocked. You are animation locked when you jump into a window that has furniture up against it. It is very dangerous because if there's a zombie lurking, you will get attacked and there's nothing you can do about it. Wouldn't that be horrible? A note on IKEA tables and just about any two-piece furniture. When you go to pick it up, it will go into two pieces. In order to place this, you need to pick up one of these two pieces. And as long as the other one is nearby, you can right click, place item, and it shows up. You can also go into this place item, place, and you see it here. You could, if you click the wrong one, you right click place item, you just are placing that part of the table down. If you run over here with only one of the two pieces of table and try to place the item down, you can't, it won't let you. You're too far away from the other piece, so make sure you grab both pieces. When you're placing, you can rotate by clicking and dragging. So let's say we wanted to place this like this. Let's put this table down here. Now this table has collision, but since it's adjacent to the window in this window tile, so again, we need to block off all the tiles around that window if we want to barricade with furniture. Now we're secure. The zombies will attack these pieces of furniture before they get into the window. Then they'll attack the pieces of furniture inside the window and they'll pile in and eventually they'll get to us. Chairs do not have collision. You cannot barricade with this chair. The recliner you can, the sofa you can, but you can just walk right through this even if you try to barricade with this chair. That's not the interaction of the window, it just has no collision. Same with these, same with this generator. However, this barbecue does act as a barricade. The first floor of our house is completely secure. We have every single window and door barricaded, whether it be with a metal sheet, metal bars, wooden planks, or furniture. What this allows us to do is come up and set up our second line of defense or a second floor escape route. We can come to any window, right click, add escape rope, as long as we have two segments of rope or a sheet rope, a nail, and a hammer. So let's go ahead and add escape rope we have our escape rope. We can hold E, climb out of the window, and our character will start climbing down the rope. It takes a little bit of energy in order to do this, so your character will get exhausted if you do this too much. We can also climb back up. Hold E, climb back up the sheet rope. As long as we have any piece of clothing that we can rip into a sheet rope, we're going to go ahead and right click this lumberjack shirt, craft sheet rope 1. In order to create an escape rope, you either need two segments of rope or two segments of sheet rope. It says here, one sheet rope per required per level. So we're gonna go ahead and right click, add escape rope fabric. It took both of our sheet ropes, one nail, and we have a sheet rope here. Sheet rope escape rope. We hold E on it, works the same as the rope. It doesn't matter as long as we have some rope here. Zombies will attack this if they come across it. We can also hang this off of fences. If we mouse over and build a wooden fence, we can hang up a sheet rope on this wooden fence. All we need are some sheet ropes and some nails. Two sheet ropes per one floor segment. We're gonna add this sheet rope. You can also hang sheet ropes off of wall frames. It doesn't have to be a window yet in order for you to hang it. We're gonna grab some sheet ropes and we're gonna add our escape rope fabric. And of course, you can hang it off of windows as well. We can start by building level one window hang our rope out of it, and we can upgrade to level 2 or level 3. It'll stay there. If we try to upgrade this to a wooden wall, it's not going to work. Our sheet rope is there, but it won't do anything. We can't actually hop over this. But this one works. Experience gain in Project Zomboid is awarded from performing actions related to that skill. Modifiers from character creation affect this as well as reading skill books. As you level skills, you gain access to new recipes and crafts. Some recipes require skill magazines for special skills such as crafting metal boxes and fences or notoriously plugging in generators. Mouse over any skill in your character sheet to see how much XP you have gained towards the next level. This shows any multipliers you currently have applied as well. There are four tiers of innate skill XP gain correlating to the 0, 1, 2, or 3 points awarded when you rolled your character. If you took no points in that skill, is a flat 25% boost. One point is a 75% boost, 
Two points is 100% boost, and three points is 125% boost. As Trudy the Fence Lens is a burglar, you've got two points in light footed, nimble, and sneaking, which has a 100% experience gain modifier to these skills. The other way to apply skill modifiers is to read skill books. These are only for crafting and survival skills and come in five volumes. When you read a skill book, it only applies an experience gain modifier. It does not give you experience. You don't have to read the full book to start gaining that experience gain multiplier, but you will get a reduced one if you only read part of the book. Once you complete the book, you gain the full multiplier. You have to be in the level range of the book to gain the multiplier. For example, a level 1 carpenter, like us, can only read book 1. You do not have to read the earlier volumes to read the higher volumes. You only need to be in the level range to read the book. Once Trudy hits level 2, we'll be able to read this carpentry level 2. But we're not there yet. Carpentry 1 gives a 3x multiplier to level 1 to 2. We started to gain a multiplier as we're 26 pages in, but it's only a 0.3 multiplier. We're going to have to read all 220 pages of this to gain the full multiplier. Carpentry 2 gives a 5x multiplier to level 3 to 4. Carpentry 3 gives an 8x multiplier to 5 to 6. Carpentry 4 gives a 12x multiplier to 7 to 8. And Carpentry 5 gives a 16x multiplier to level 9 to 10. All skill books have the same bonuses for their skill levels and range. This isn't just a carpentry thing, it's for every single crafting skill and survivalist skill that is a five volume skill book set. Some TV shows do give experience. As long as you have electricity, you can watch programs or VHS. Life and Living Channel broadcasts various educational programs early on in the apocalypse every 6 to 12 hours until these broadcasts go off the air. You can tune in around 6 a.m., noon, and 6 p.m catch these shows. Unfortunately for True to the Fence Lens, we've missed all the shows, although we did get a tick of farming early on. But regardless, we can still watch VHS tapes in order to watch to get access to these programs. Any XP modifiers you have applied will affect the TV shows or VHS experience gain. Educational videos will only give experience one time. Throughout the program, you can typically get chunks of XP. You can turn off the VHS or TV program between these ticks of XP and watch the rest later and get the experience you didn't gain from finishing watching the full show. You cannot rewatch and get more experience unless you die and make a new character. Pair this trick with reading, turn off the TV once you get the level up, read the next book, and then watch the rest of the program after gaining the multiplier. If we click training materials, it brings up this window, you can click to VHS or home VHS. These are all the different media that you can possibly find and watch in Project Zomboid. Some of these give experience. For instance, our Woodcraft Episode 1. If we go down to Woodcraft, we have not watched Woodcraft Episode 1 yet. In order to watch a VHS tape, we open up our device options, or just click on the TV to get our TV open. This little slot right here, we're going to drag a VHS tape into it. For instance, this Woodcraft Episode 1. Drag this here. We are now ready to watch our Value Tech television and watch Woodcraft Episode 1. We have our multiplier, so we can see that we have a 3x multiplier. We can also check our skills. Carpentry Volume 1 is highlighted. Let's go down to our VHS Woodcraft Volume 1 bookcases. So we're going to play this VHS tape. We're going to get ticks of experience throughout this program. This can only happen once per playthrough. See, our carpentry just went up. I'm going to pause. Our carpentry went up. We can see that we got a chunk of experience here. It doesn't go up in a flat rate, it comes in a chunk. As soon as this says, up carpentry, that's when we gain the chunk of experience, the tick of experience. Carpentry just went up again. We are now 144.25 out of 150. Our carpentry just went up. We can turn this off. We haven't fully watched the episode. There's still more we could learn from this TV show. If we go over here and start reading Carpentry Volume 2, we can then finish watching this and get every single bit of experience we can from this VHS tape. We are level 2 Carpentry, so we can read Volume 2. See that we've gotten a partial multiplier. It's going up. We're going to get a 5x multiplier when we finish reading this book. Great, we finished reading Carpentry 2. We fully read it, to all 260 pages of it. If we come to skills in our training materials, we can see that it's highlighted. 
we've completely finished this carpentry book. We have our VHS tape in here, Woodcraft Episode 1. It's not highlighted in our training materials. We can still get some experience from this. But we have to rewatch it from the beginning, however, in order to get to that part where we were getting experience from it. We're still gaining carpentry, our boredom is going down, we've gotten to the part of the episode that we haven't seen. And there it ends. We have seen all of episode one bookcases. See, it is now highlighted. Unless you die, you cannot rewatch this. The fastest way to gain experience is to watch VHS tapes or catch the program on Life and Living. If you don't have access to VHS tapes, don't have electricity, or haven't read any of the books, it doesn't matter. You still gain experience whenever you do things related to that skill. If we want to gain experience, we can disassemble things. We can right click on a green wooden chair, for instance. It says skill, carpentry. We will gain carpentry skill when we disassemble this. We require this tool ball peen hammer or a hammer or a stone hammer and a garden saw or a normal saw. We have a 37% chance to dismantle this and provide useful material. When we get that useful material, we get experience. The chance that you dismantle it successfully goes up the higher that relevant skill is. We're going to disassemble this green wooden chair. And we successfully got a plank. For carpentry, dismantling double beds is the best form of experience other than watching VHS tapes. So we don't need a hammer and a saw like those other furniture pieces. See that we're at 114.25 experience. Dismantle this large oak bed. We succeeded. We got a plank and some nails. These five scrap wood came from failing to dismantle this. We are now up to 164.25. That is the most experience that we've gotten other than watching the VHS in one go. The easiest and most ubiquitous way to find logs are from trees. There's trees everywhere. The taller the tree is, the more logs you'll get. The really tall trees will give you four logs per, but really tiny trees will only give you two. Sometimes even one. If you wait long enough, these trees will grow. Or you can chop them down now. It's your choice. If you see wood piles in the wild, sometimes you can loot them and there'll be logs there. Other times, you can forage. In, in order to enter forage mode, you right click and click investigate this area. You start, you can see disable search mode or enable search mode. I have this bound, the tilde key. We'll get into that when we get to foraging and eat nice food. That you can make weapons. You can make both spears and you can just hammer some nails into planks or baseball bats. We created a spiked plank. It's a weapon. We can equip it in both hands. When this gets damaged, you can repair it. All it takes is some nails. We're going to build a spiked baseball bat. We've got some nails and we've got a baseball bat. We've also got a hammer. You can repair this with nails. However, when you repair the spiked baseball bat, you don't get experience. But when you repair the spiked plank, you do get carpentry experience. That's just the way it works. Let's take our plank and let's make a spear. We can take this crafted spear and we can attach stuff to this. We can put a screwdriver, a kitchen knife, or even a hunting knife. Let's put a hunting knife on this spear. We now have a more dangerous spear. Look at that. And we can also take the hunting knife from the spear. So we can get our knife back. Make sure to do this before this breaks. The higher your carpentry level, the more you can repair, or the more effectively you'll repair with wood glue. Carpentry also affects how well you repair with wood glue. You'll potentially repair more, and you have a higher chance of success on a more heavily repaired item. You could keep repairing an item for a long time, but it might be effective to find a new one, because when it's mostly duct tape and wood glue, it's not that effective. Your carpentry level not only impacts how well you repair items with wood glue, but when you craft spears, the durability is increased based on your carpentry level. That's great. You can take a trait called Handy. The Handy trait gives you one point in carpentry so that you'll have an XP boost of about of 75%, and you will <clears throat> not only will Handy give you an XP boost by having a skill point in it, but it increases the durability and speed of everything you craft with carpentry. It's fantastic. If you're considering going hard on the carpentry on a playthrough, strong recommend. Take the handy. Hit F2 to pause it, and you can still look at all the different things you can craft. This is nice if you're new to the carpentry or you just want to consider what you want to build without wasting a lot of in-game time. The carpentry context menu is accessible when you have a hammer in your inventory. So if we right-click, we now have carpentry. If we were to drop our hammer on the ground, walk over here, we no longer have carpentry. So as long as we have our hammer, put this back onto our belt, 
It's good for giving zombies the bonk, but it also is critical for using carpentry. We can mouse over all these and see that there's different things that we can craft. We go to wall, wooden wall frame, plank two, nails two, carpentry two. All we need is some planks. At level zero carpentry, you can make wooden crosses. They give XP. Go ahead and set up your very own compost box. You can do it indoors or outdoors, doesn't matter. Either way, we go to carpentry, we go to furniture, we go to composter. All we need is carpentry level 2, or nails at 5 planks. So let's go ahead and build this. This is effectively a garbage bin. We put rotten food here and it'll turn into compost over time. It'll get you worms, you can use a sack to grab that compost and fertilize your crops. The wooden crate can be built starting at carpentry level 3. However, once you hit level 7, it changes shape and it looks more professional and less janky. And instead of being able to fit only 40, you'll be able to fit even more. Once you achieve level 7 carpentry, this lets you build nicer looking crates. When you go to carpentry and you go to wooden crate, you can see that it's a different style than these other crates. So when we build this, it looks nicer. It has a 60 capacity versus this old crate that has a 40 capacity. This is very nice. These bar elements and bar corners are effectively the same thing as these countertops. Additionally, you can make bookcases, small bookcases, shelves, double shelves. All of these can be used to store items. You can put stuff in the compost if you really want to. Fences, you can make these fences. The sandbag walls, gravel walls, be careful with those because once you make it, you won't really be able to destroy it without a sledgehammer. The lamp on the pillar, you can also make those for some light, or you can take over a structure. You can find these outdoor lamps and pick them up with electronics. Read these Hunter Skill Mags, and then you can place traps. You can do it by reading Hunter Skill Magazine 1, 2, or 3. You can also watch Exposure Survival 6, and it'll teach you how to trap. We've got Trapper. We can make all these different things now. We can make a stick trap, a snare trap, or a wooden box trap. We'll get into the specifics of trapping later, but just know you gotta put it far away from you in order for it to work. And then you right click, place trap. In order to get planks, we're gonna have to unstack some logs, or find some logs, or dismantle a bunch of stuff. Throw our ropes on the ground. Note that if we wanted to stack logs, all we need is two ropes or two sheet ropes and some logs. Right click, we can make a four log stack. This is inventory crafting by the way. You can also find this up here. If you go to... Carpentry, unstack logs, craft one. Or you can do this by right clicking, logs, and make four log stack, inventory crafting. We're gonna go ahead and take our logs. We're gonna saw our logs with our saw. Fast forward, we have a bunch of planks. We're weighed down extremely much so. We're at 43 out of 12, but we can still carry 50. We're gonna take a little bit of damage from this, and we're not gonna be able to fight much. We're going to make a fence. We can right click, go to carpentry, go to wall, wooden wall frame. You can click and drag when you're crafting, and you can change the orientation of it. We're going to build a wall. What this allows us to do is then right click into two stage building. You can hit E to just climb through this, it acts as a fence. Create wooden wall level 1. If we wanted to get wooden wall level 2, we're going to need carpentry level 4. If we want it level 3, 7, etc. Create metal wall, we're going to need to make the metal wall recipe from reading the skill magazine and have level 2 metal working, have some propane torch, and the metal sheet. We're only worried about the wooden wall for now. The wooden wall, as you can see, is kind of jank. It's got the least amount of HP compared to level 2 and level 3. We're going to make this it blocks vision. We're going to make this. We go ahead, fast forward. We've started to make a wall. Okay, fantastic. If we wanted to continue with this, we're going to have to go wall, wooden wall frame. We're going to make this wall all the way across. We're going to grab our three log stack. Equip secondary. Moving wood in stacks is definitely more efficient than trying to move wood one at a time. Or sawing the planks and then getting the... <clears throat> or sawing the planks and then moving the planks over here. So we're going to go ahead, unstack our logs, and drop our rope on the ground, and we're going to saw our logs. Notice our carpentry experience is going to go up as we're sawing. We're up to 223, we're going to saw the log, 
we're up to 236.75. We are gaining carpentry experience as we are sawing the log. We're going to make a window. We're going to right click carpentry. Oop. It's kind of finicky. You're going to have to click right where it is on the square that is at in order to upgrade it. You got to click it. Okay, so we're going to make a create wooden window. And we're going to make this one a window. With this window, it acts the same as other windows on the main house already that have already been pre-made. Barricade with planks. Our window is now barricaded, just like the other windows. We made that. In order to roof a structure, you need to put a wooden floor down. The wooden floor acts as the roof. There's no sloping roofs in Project Zomboid. Those are all just graphical that you can make if you're an admin. But for us, as a survivor, all we can do is place a wooden floor down. In order to do this, we need to right click, wooden floor. We can come to a window, like this, and place the wooden floor down. It works on these western facing windows. It also works on the northern window. With our wooden floor down, we can hop out of the window. We are now standing on our wooden floor. Be very careful when you're doing this. You will fall off if you're not careful. There's no physics in Project Zomboid relating to building. Your structures will not fall down. We are still outside. We can tell because the temperature is the same as outside. 73.3. It's important to have a digital watch when you're doing something like this so that you can build everything you need to. We're going to build a little shed. In order to plumb a rainwater collector, you need to have an indoor area. This is going to be our little water closet. Well, in a sense. We are now considered inside. The temperature dropped, 71.6. Outside, 74.5. Inside, 71.6. You can tell that this is an interior structure. Now that we've got an indoor section, we need to find something that we can put in there. This bathtub has no chance to break when we pick it up, so we're going to go ahead and pick this up for a guaranteed chance of success. We're going to take our bathtub, both pieces, this is as far as we can go for now, because we don't have level 4 carpentry. In order to make a rainwater collector, we need to get garbage bags. If we go to our furniture, rain collector barrel, we need four of them. So, let's go digging in the garbage. Take all our garbage bags we can find. Without a pipe wrench, you will not be able to plumb. Now we know that this is a fence, and right below us on these four tiles is our little interior bathroom area. Right click, go to carpentry, go to furniture, rain collector barrel. It'll let us build as long as we're close to our stack of planks. The sink will draw from a 3x3 grid above it. But we can actually put several of these down. We can add the water from our paint bucket with water that's tainted. You can see the rain collector barrel. It's got 25 units of water and it is tainted water. Place our bath like this. Right click the bathtub and click plumb large deluxe bath to connect this to the water barrels overhead. Any wall piece that you make, you can disassemble. Now we have our bath. It's plumbed. Even though we remove that wall, and it's considered outside, it is still plumbed. Now when we fill, any time you plumb water, it is purified. So we just have purified drinking water from our tainted water, and from that water up there. At the center of this 3x3 grid, if there is a sink placed there, it will get access to every single one of them. We could keep this sink going once the water goes out. We just have to put a little balcony out there and a rainwater collector. Where can they go? The 3x3 grid. So right there, right there, or right there. That sink indoors will reach these three. Once you achieve level 7 carpentry, it unlocks your ability to create even more recipes. Apart from the enhanced crate, you can make the enhanced rain collector barrel. So we're going to go ahead and make some of these here, outside of where our laundry room is. Okay, now that we've cleared away our level 1 wall, let's go ahead and place our wooden double door. These are effectively garage doors. Click and drag. And let's build it. With this door, you can fit your car through. Gates facing north-south will always open southwards. Note that south is this way of the screen, the bottom left, and north is the top right of the screen. So in order to block this gate, you have to put something in the path that it opens. 
So if we were to place this here, it works. If you have a gate, if we were to place it on the other side, and you try to place this down, it won't work. A note about the place tool, you can hit tab to cycle between pick up, place, rotate, and disassemble. We're going to place this here, and while it does block you from walking through it, it doesn't block the gate. Notice this chair doesn't have collision, so it won't block our gate. Level 6 carpentry also unlocks your ability to build stairs. This lets you build a roof in any location that you want. With a staircase, you can then proceed to roof anything so that you can make an indoor cabin anywhere you'd like to. That directly allows you to plumb things, because remember, it has to be indoors for it to be able to be plumbed. If you have a sledgehammer, you have found one of the most important items in the game. You could use it as a weapon, sure, but what you want to do with it is right-click and destroy. You can destroy any tile in the game with this. It's about any piece of furniture. Let's say we wanted to make an extension in our bathroom or a bedroom. Right-click, destroy. It brings up these tiles. And hit R to cycle through the things that you want to destroy. Be very careful with this. That little light switch, you can't get it back. It's gone forever. So let's knock a hole right here. Look, we're in. We've breached it. We have a key to our base. This means we can lock it and unlock it from inside. If you mouse over the key, you can see that it highlights yellow. This means that we have a matching doorknob and key. We can lock the door on the outside and lock it. If you don't have this, you can only lock it from the inside. Typically, exterior doors are the only ones that you can lock. We can't lock this door. It's an interior door. When you build your own door, if you use a doorknob that you have the key to, and it's an exterior door, you can lock it. This one is a random doorknob. We can't actually... We can't lock it. However, this doorknob is from a key down the street that we got the key to. So we're going to go ahead and disassemble this door. There's a flaw <laughs> in the plan. We're going to pick up a random doorknob and hope that this is <laughs> the door that we need. <laughs> okay. So we can't lock this door, because it's an external door. However, if we pick up the doorknob that we have the matching key to, and it's an exterior door, we can right-click and we can lock this door. Even though you normally can't lock interior doors, you can, because this was an external door. But now, it's an internal door. We mouse over the doorknob key, it doesn't even show that it works, but it does. It's a hidden feature. Every single doorknob has its own key ID. In order to get the doorknob, you need to find a house that has a key. You can get a key by killing a zombie inside of that house. They might drop a key. So if we have the key here, we can pick this key up, and we're going to rename this Doorknob 2. So we know which one it is. When we mouse over it, we can see that it has the, the two doorknobs, the front door and the back door of this house, go to this key. So if we right-click this door, we try to disassemble this door, we've got a 60% chance of getting something useful. Let's hope we get the doorknob. We failed to get the doorknob on this door, but hopefully we can get it on this door. The higher your carpentry, the higher chance you'll get the doorknob. We failed to get the doorknob. Oh, we'll use crowbars to pick up windows. Let's pick this window up. Oh, we succeeded in picking it up. Fantastic. There's a chance to break it. It's got barricades here, but we're going to go ahead and place our wooden window on our barricaded window. Alright, we now have a window here. You can't build a new window, but you can go grab one from somewhere else and install it. It won't let us pick up the broken window with it barricaded, but it'll let us install a window with it barricaded. So if you wanted to replace these broken windows around, you could. All you need is a crowbar and luck, or tent carpentry. There's already a window there, you have to remove it first. Same with these tiles. You have to pick up the tile first before you place another one there. Let's try picking this one up. Well, it broke, but now the floorboard beneath is there. You have to place a floorboard first before you can put the tile down. You have a 45% chance to break it. That one broke. We got that one. So we picked up a tile. So just like other pieces of furniture, you go to our white tile place item. You can also do it with the put down menu, the pick up or the place. And there we go. 
If you have paint and a paintbrush on your in your inventory, you can paint things. This higher level crate that we have here, we could paint it black. Let's go ahead and paint our crate black. There it is. We can color code our crates, as long as we have a bunch of different colors of paint. It won't let you paint these shoddy looking crates. You need to be at least level 7 carpentry, or you need to find these good crates. Then you can paint them different colors. You can do this with walls as well. What you need to do is you need to have a bucket of water and a plaster powder. With that bucket of water and a bag of plaster powder, you can right click and make a bucket of plaster. Let's go ahead and make some plaster. With our bucket of plaster powder that we've made, we can plaster walls and then paint the walls. So let's go ahead and make a wall real quick. Carpentry, wooden wall. Now let's upgrade our wall to wooden wall level 3. We now have a wall here. As long as we have a paintbrush and a bucket of plaster, we can right click this and we can plaster this wall. Once our wall has been plastered, we can then take some paint and we can paint this wall. So you can custom color your own walls. It's fantastic. You can also paint signs. As long as you grab a color of paint and a paintbrush, you can come up and paint a sign in blue or black. There you go, that's how you paint walls in Project Zomboid. Compared to carpentry, metalworking is fairly straightforward. All you have to do is dismantle a whole lot of stuff. In order to do this, you need a propane torch, a welder's mask, and some propane. Ideally, you're going to want to read the book first, Metalworking 1. That way you get the same bonus just like any other volume one, that 3x multiplier. Now we've been getting metalworking XP from barricading these metal barricades. Like carpentry, the 5 volume metalworking set Gives the exact same XP bonus for the 3, 5, 8, and 15 bonus. Z Squad, Season 2, Episode 3. It's not going to give you that much experience. It'll also give you mechanics experience, so read up on your mechanics before you get a hold of this bad boy. You notice that the Welder's Mask gives armor. If you inspect it, it has 30% bite, 50% scratch resistance, but it can't be repaired. That's great. So if we put this on, it replaces our glasses. Since we're nearsighted, we may not want to wear this all over the place. Welder's masks aren't particularly rare, but when you need one and don't have one, they just... You'll never find it. You just gotta find them. Just like the glasses in the hat, they can get knocked off. And if they get knocked off and you leave it behind, well, hope you have a spare. Every single one of these George 4 guy grills you see lying around will have a propane tank in it. You can also find these in garages and other industrial spawns. As long as we have propane, we can remove and replace this barricade. Barricade, metal sheet. We're getting XP, we're at 120 out of 150. Let's do that again. 121.5. So, it's not the most XP, but you can grind this way if you don't want to go out and find stuff. It does reclaim the metal sheet every time, so as long as you have a bunch of propane in one single metal sheet, you can do this. As long as you have both your propane torch and your metal worker's mask on you, you can dismantle a lot of different metal fences. You can right click, go to metalwork, and pause. When you have it pause, you can mouse through all these different things that you can build. Coincidentally, all of these are things that you can disassemble. So if we go to disassemble this green oven, it's skill, metalworking. I'm not going to disassemble my oven. Take a trip to Spiffo's and you'll find a whole lot of metal. So let's start dismantling. Our steel counter, 10% chance. Did we get anything? We got some screws and some unusable metal, but we did get some experience. We're at 51. Let's do this again. We don't have a propane torch anymore. We're completely out. So what we need to do is come up to our propane tank, right click, refill propane torch. We'll pick up the propane tank and put it back where we found it. If you come across a car wreck, you can either tow it somewhere safe by using V, 
in the toe feature, or you can just dismantle it there. You can right click, dismantle the car wreck, you can see that it requires a welder's mask and a lot of propane. So to do this, you find one of these cars that look burnt out like this, right click, dismantle car wreck. Not all cars you can do this to, only a few. However, there are quite a lot of cars that are burnt out in the world, you'll just have to find them. These are the best source of metal, it requires a lot of propane, and the amount of metal that you gain is based on your metalworking skill. The higher metalworking, the more stuff you'll get. Look at all this stuff, it's all very useful. There are, however, four metalworking magazines, which include 1, 2, 3, and 4. Volume 4 lets you convert between metal sheets and small metal sheets using propane and metal sheets. Volume 3 lets you make metal fences. Volume 2 lets you make metal containers. Volume 1 lets you make metal walls and metal roofs. When we go to our recipes, we haven't read them yet. Let's put these back on the floor. Okay, if you find yourself with a lot of metal sheets, or small metal sheets, you can interconvert them. So if we look at what we need to do this, if we click over to metalworking, make metal sheet, we need four small metal sheets and level four metalworking. So we need to get level four metalworking before we can actually do this. But once we do have level four metalworking, that's an option as well. What we can actually do is with one small metal sheet and one scrap metal, we can make a metal roof. This is the only thing that we can craft with low metalworking. So if we didn't find this recipe, we wouldn't be able to do this. If you're trying to just grind, you want to just spam level up, you could just do it all on the same spot, but let's say we could just keep doing it over and over and over again. But if we don't want to just have that one square, we can keep extending it out. In order to build metal walls, you need some luck in order to find the magazine that lets you build metal walls, and you also need enough carpentry to build a wooden wall frame. Once you have your wooden wall frame, you can right click and upgrade to a metal wall level 1 or 2, or a metal window 1 or 2 if you have the appropriate metalworking and materials. So we need a propane torch, a welding mask, and some metal sheets. Also the recipe, and enough carpentry to be able to build it. It works the same as the other walls, it's just metal, it has slightly more HP, and it's got a different look to it. You're able to make metal wall frames as well if you don't want to level carpentry at all. However, if you take a look, the metal wall frame takes level 3 metal working, so you have to wait until you're level 3 even though the wall itself you can make it level 2. It also takes propane, welding rods, and metal bars. Let's go ahead and make one of these. And it functions the exact same as the normal wooden wall frame. You can put, you can turn it into a wooden wall, you can turn it into a wooden window, you can turn it into a metal wall, or you can turn it into a metal window. Once you've reached level 4 metalworking and you've read this, the correct magazine in order to make metal crates, you can make metal crates. Let's go ahead and make one. This metal crate has a storage of 80. These high-level boxes only have a storage of 60. It takes a lot of materials in order to make these, though, on top of being lucky enough to find the correct magazine. It takes two metal pipes, two metal sheets, two small metal sheets, and some welding rods, as well as having some scrap metal. You can't paint the metal crate. It just is. With metalworking, you can make big wired fences. These big wired fences are exactly what they sound like. They're big and they're wired fences. You can see through these. They just take different materials. If you look at metalworking, the big wired fence uses wire. Big pole fence uses scrap metal, metal pipe, and then a bunch of propane. Metalworking is extremely useful when you pop open the hood of your car. I'll explain this more in depth during the vehicle portion. However, knowing that a repaired hood and a repaired trunk make your vehicle much more useful. This guide was for build 41.78.16. When build 42 does come out, it's going to be different. I'm Beaker, and this is Trudy the Fence Lens. Thanks for watching. Good luck.